Today, let us take a look at Bootstrap 4 Utilities. So, Bootstrap 4 has a lot of utility or helper classes to quickly style elements without using any CSS code. So, first we have the borders. So, use the border class to add or remove borders from an element. So, we can use class equals border and that will place borders on all of the sides of the element. Then border does zero. That means we don't have any border. So border, border does zero. Border, border, top zero. So we don't have top border. So border, border, right zero. We don't have a border on the right side. Border and then border, bottom zero. We don't have a border at the bottom. And of course, border, border left. We don't have border on the left side. So that's pretty straightforward. Border color. We could also change the border color. So add a color to the border with any of the contextual border color classes. So just like for example, in this case, we use border and then border primary. So the color is like this, somewhat blue. Secondary is a dark gray, etc. So success, green, danger, red, etc. So we have border, border primary, border, border secondary, border, border success, border, border danger, border, border warning, border info, etc. So we have light, dark, and white border. And white border, of course, can be used if, especially if you have a dark background. Then border radius. Add rounded corners to an element with the rounded classes. So we have also the rounded classes. So we have rounded SM, so we have small rounded corners. If it is rounded, so we have a bigger rounded corners. Rounded LG, so larger rounded uh, corners. Then, so by default, it's medium. That's why if you just place round, it's medium. Uh, the radius is just medium. So rounded top, so the top side is rounded, but the bottom corners are not rounded. Then we have rounded white. So the right side is rounded, but the left side is not rounded. Around the bottom, so only the bottom corners are rounded, but the top side are not rounded. Then we have rounded left, so only the left side is rounded, but the right side is not rounded. Then rounded circle, so that means that the radius is 50%. That's why we have a circular, uh, the element is circular. And then rounded zero, that means we don't have any rounded corners so if if you have for example an element which is by default have rounded corners we can also add rounded zero to remove the rounded corners float and clear fix so float an element to the right with a float right class or to the left with a float left class add clear floats and clear floats rather with the clear fix class. So if you float an element to the left, it's something like this. So you notice it is on the left side. And if you float an element to the right, it is on the right side. So here we have the div clear clear fix and then we have span class, float left and float right. So let's try this. So here is my float left. So let's take a look at the element. So container h2 float. This is my h2. We have the paragraph. We have the clear fix. And then inside float left, float left. So this is the element. So what if we change this one to both float right? So if we have two float rights here and then we run. So you notice the first one will be on the rightmost side. And then the second one will be next to it since both have float right. So if I change this one to float left, so you notice this is one, it's reverse. Float left is on the right side and float right is on the left side. So that's the purpose of float. Responsive floats. So float an element to the left or to the right depending on the screen width with responsive float classes. So the class is float 
dash and then we can replace this asterisk with uh, SM, MD, LG, or XL dash and then left or right. So where asterisk here is M that means uh, the greater or equal to 576 and then MD <coughs> that means greater or equal to 768 LG greater or equal to 992 XL greater or equal to 1 2000. so float right so this is, this is an example float SM right float right on small screen but if it is not in small screen it will not float right that's why this will only work if the width of the screen is higher than this so let's try this so here I have here some so float SM right so this will float right if yeah so right on small <coughs> screens or wider but once we make our screen smaller there it is so it will only float right if sm is higher than or equal to 576 so if it is lower it will not float right so you notice my screen now is 559 so it is lower than 576 that's why this one this element with this, this element, I use float SM is no longer floating to the right. So if we move this, so again, it's floating to the right. As we go on making our screen larger, then there we have now two elements floating to the right. And that's the medium. Why? Again, let's take a look. For medium, it will be greater than or equal to 768. And it is now 778. So it is now floating to the right. So I hope you were able to uh, understand the use of responsive float classes. Then we have the center align. So center an element with an MX auto class adds margin and left margin and an auto so we have here centered so for example we have the class mx auto bg warning style so this will be the output and then yeah, because x here stands for x axis or horizontal so it will be centered horizontally then for width <coughs> we have also have width classes so W dash and then asterisk. So probably we have 25, 50, 75, 100, and MW 100. So here, when you say 25, that is 25% of the screen width. 50%, 75, 100, and max 100. So let's try this. So that's 25%, 50%, 75, 100, and max with 100. So if you move that, you notice it also changes because it is in percentage. Then height, the same is true with height. We have height 25%, 50, 75, 100% and maximum height 100. So we have again H25 for 25%, H50, H75, H100, MH100. Let's try that. So very similar with the width. Now if we try this, so that's our height, and of course, uh, I cannot change the height. But anyway, that's the output. I don't have a big screen here. Actually, I can change the height by changing the browser height, but uh, let's not do it anymore. So let's spacing. So both strap 4 has a wide range of responsive margin and padding utility classes. They work for all breakpoints like XS, SM, MD, LG, and XL. So take note of the breakpoints. The classes are used in format. In the format property, sides, dash, sides. So for XS, 
and property side does break font break point size for SM MD LGN XL so no need to place for the break point for XS so that's the default so M is the margin and P is the padding and T stands for top B for bottom L for left R for right X is for left and right that means horizontal Y is for top and bottom blank sets a margin or padding on all sides of the element so the sizes are zero so padding is zero one is 25 rem that's a relative size so that's 25 percent of the default font so if let's say the font size is 16 then that means 25 percent of 16 is 4 px and so on with the rest of this so 1.5 is 1.5 times so if the default font size is 16 then you multiply that by 1.5 that's 24 px yeah. then we also have n1 that's negative so if you use n1 n2 these are negative so why do we use negative margin sometimes you would like to some sort of crop an object so you hide uh, maybe some sort of an portion of the element on the left side of your screen by setting negative margins so example I only have a top padding of 1.5 RAM so 24 px I have a top padding so here you notice the top padding is 1.5 RAM or 24 px here I have a padding on all sides so all sides 3 RAM or REM or 48 px I have a margin on all sides so you notice the, we have margins here okay so this is pt4 that means padding padding on top four p does five means padding on all sides m does five margin on all sides padding at the bottom and this is now of course the background so that's the output of the following then we also have more spacing examples so margin on all sides. let's try let's say margin on all sides let's try it so we have this utility so m5 that's margin on, margin on all sides if we change that to m let's say m4 and then we run so what did you notice so i have now a smaller margin so you can just change these values so padding padding bottom padding left so padding y so that means left and right padding y top and bottom we can also use the shadow classes so we have no shadow here we have small shadow here we have the default shadow then we have the large shadow so shadow none that means no shadows if let's say for example you have an element which is by default has shadow you can actually remove that by using shadow none shadow sm small shadow etc so let's try this and let's do it side by side so there so these are the shadows so shadow none shadow shadow and then we just have use padding and margin at the bottom etc so bg light that's the background so let's try to use bg success for this one so that's it so we don't have a shadow change this one also to bg uh, warning no warning so change this to bg warning if we run this one let's say bg primary we run this one so there so vertical alignment so use the align classes to change the alignment of elements only works on inline so notice it only works on inline inline block and inline table and table elements so baseline top middle bottom text so you notice here 
baseline, top, middle, bottom, bot text, top, text, bottom. So let's take a look at this. So baseline, that's a line baseline, this one. So it's a line here. And then uh, we have here top. So you notice it is on the top, a line at the top. Then on the middle. So since this is one, the container is just a small container, then we don't really notice the difference that much. But this is how we do it. So you can take a look at the code. And let's proceed to the next utility. Responsive embeds. So create a responsive video or slideshow embeds based on the width of the parent. So add the embed responsive item to any embed elements. So just like frame or video in a parent element with embed responsive and an aspect ratio of your choice. So here in our example, we have 21.9 aspect ratio. So div class embed responsive, embed responsive does 21 by 9. That's a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And then we have in an iframe. So for 16.9 aspect ratio. So the same except that we change embed responsive 16 by 9 and then we have here the embed responsive item so we should we have a wrapper container and then the content should also contain the class embed responsive item so let's try this okay so here is an example so the first one is an aspect ratio of one is to one so embed responsive element so so that's the video so you notice it's like a square because the ratio is one is to one and if you change the size it also changes because it is responsive and this one is a four by three so what how do we do that so we have here div class equals embed responsive and then embed responsive does four by three so that's the ratio so old videos, older televisions use this uh, ratio. So iframe, then embed responsive item. So this is now the item, then we place the YouTube element. So that's how we place the YouTube element inside an iframe. So this is the output. So take a look at the code. So the source of the iframe is the YouTube video and then it's responsive so as we make our screen wider the video also responds so the rest will be the same except for the aspect ratio so visibility the visible or invisible classes to control the visibility elements note these classes do not change the css display value the only they only add visibility visible or visibility visibility hidden so i am visible and next year we have an element here which is not visible so class visible class invisible of course you can use later on you can use a jquery maybe to make the invisible so just change the class from invisible to visible to make it visible so you can use add class or remove class so we have in our position use the fixed top class to make any element fixed at the top of the page so just like in this example you notice that the menu bar here the nav bar is fixed on top so how did we do that so in our nav we just added the fixed top class and then likewise we can also use the fixed bottom class to make any element fixed or stay at the bottom of the page so it's any element let's say for example you want your footer to stay at the bottom so you can use uh, fixed bottom so here our menu is fixed at the bottom we also have the sticky top 
use a sticky top class to make any element fix or stay at the top of the page when you scroll past it so that is when you scroll past it so you can place it anywhere but when you scroll past it then it will stick on the top and uh, no this does not work on internet explorer 11 and earlier but anyway uh, i don't know who's still using internet explorer 11 so here this is an example so we have the sticky bar here is a bar so the bar we added the class sticky top to this bar so if i'm going to scroll this then the bar right reaches the top portion of the screen then you notice it sticks on the top so that's sticky top then the close icon so use the close class to style a close icon this is often used to al for alerts and models note that we use the ampersand time symbol to create the actual icon or a better looking x also note that it floats right by default so if you use the close class then it default uh, it floats to the right automatically so just like in this case button type equals button and then class equals close so you notice it's on the right side automatically then you also have the screen readers the screen readers is used class to hide an element on all devices except screen readers and uh, i'll explain more of this because screen readers are actually used for uh, let's say for example they can use automatic uh, uh, an application that will read while it's on the screen and you can place so this one will only be visible to screen readers but not for others okay so let's say for example you have a website that is used for uh, blind so maybe the blind of course or those who are visually impaired the visually impaired cannot view your web page but maybe he can make use of a screen reader then colors so as described in the color chapter here is a list of all text so with text muted text primary text success text info text warning text danger text secondary text white text dark text body etc text light so here are the colors so let's text white or text light so we can use text white or text light do we have text light yes there yeah, we have text like so you can also use them on links just like in this case so let's let's see how so we have here href so class text dark so it will change the default color of the links And you can also use opacity so text black 50 text white 50 classes so black text with 50 percent opacity on white background so white text with 50 percent opacity so that means it is somewhat transparent so example let's take a look at the code so here so let's take a look at this black text with 50% opacity that's why it is not very black 50% opacity then text white 50 then background colors we have bg primary bg success BG info, BG warning, BG danger, BG secondary, BG dark, and BG light. So these are the background. Uh, let's take a look at this. So these are examples of the background colors. Typography cl text class. So we have display. Display headings are used to stand out more than normal headings. So we have display one, display two, display three, display four. So if you try this. So display one is bigger than display four. So here's our code. Take a look at our code. Then we have font weight bold, font weight bolder, font weight normal, font weight light, font weight lighter, font italic, 
So lead, so make a paragraph stand out. So lead, let's take a look at what is lead. So here you notice we have the container, we have H2 typography, P we have here a paragraph, normal paragraph. But the next paragraph we use class equals lead. So you notice this paragraph stands out. So you you can easily notice this paragraph as it is different from the other or normal paragraphs. So small indicates smaller text set to 85%. Text break prevents a long text from breaking layout. So yeah, so here we have a text with text break and this one is without text break. So if you use text break, it will break the text so that it will not destroy the layout without text break. So that's normal. You notice that our text will not break. So sometimes it will be better to do this, especially for cell phones. So with text break. Text left, text justify. So let's take a look at text justify. So here, text left. So on the left side, text right, text center, text justify. So usually we have straight left and straight right margin for text justify. Text lowercase. So lowercase text, uppercase text. So let's take a look at this. So text lowercase. Even though you notice that every not all texts are in lowercase, it will display all the text in lowercase, text uppercase, all text in uppercase and capitalize, text capitalize, it will capitalize the first letters of the text. Okay. Initialism. So display the text inside an ABBR element in a slightly smaller font size. So if you have abbreviations. Take a look at the code here. So ABBR title, Word Health Organization, WHO, was founded in. So that's the default. And then be a title so here it is slightly so we have class initialism initialism rather and then you notice the who here is quite smaller as compared to the previous one so this is the normal one and here it is quite smaller so we have list and styled So, list and style remove the default list style and left margin on left item. So, we have here UL class leave, uh, list and style. So, it removes default list style and left margin. So, you notice there's no margin here. So, list inline. So, here's our list instead of uh, it's a vertical list we have a horizontal list so because of we use the class list inline okay if we remove that so what if I remove this class so what will happen so if we run that Oh, because we will also remove all of this so that we don't have an inline list. It's a default list. So we have the list inline item, list inline. So we use two classes. And that's it. That's a default list. So black elements. To so make an element into black element, add a D black class or use any of the D asterisk black classes to remove 
uh, to control when the element should be a black element on a specific screen. So when it is black, it, uh, it means that it will occupy the whole width. So D black, BG success, DSM black, DMD black. So you know uh, you know this. Uh, sizes or breaks so if you try that so here you notice that this is already a black this one is already a black but MD LG and XL are not yet blocks so they occupy the whole width or the whole screen if you may so once you make it larger you notice that DMD now becomes also a black so DMD black and we make it larger then the LG becomes also a block you make it smaller then it's only the block so for cell phones that means it is only the block element so here are other display classes I will not be explaining this anymore so I'll be ending my demo here I will be explaining the IRS maybe on my next video. Thank you very much.